Thank you very much for doing this today. I appreciate it very much. Well, that's all right. It's my pleasure. Now, of course, uh, we're talking because on uh, Tuesday, some of the Gentle Giant catalog was uh, was uh, re-released on CD. Um, that's fine. There's, there's an awful lot of, uh, of Gentle Giant activity all at a burst after a, a number of years of inactivity. What brought all that about? Well, I, I think it was um, <clears throat> the fact that um, in your great and wonderful country, um, after a period of time, the material that you've written comes back to the, the, um, the artist um, uh, from the record company, uh, unless they're actively using it, and um, nobody was actively using it, I gather, so uh, it, the, the, the actual material was reverted to us, which means we were able to obtain the original masters um, and to have them, you know, uh, remastered as accurately to the original as, as is digitally absolutely possible. So that was that was what attracted uh, us to it. Um, also, the fact that there does seem to be an awful lot of people who are far too young to have ever seen the band in its original form, um, who really love the music and are interested in it. And so we'd love to perpetuate that if we can. And one of the ways to do it would be to get some nice, nicely presented product out there again. I mean, it seems, to us it seems a little bit strange to re-release stuff again, especially as we have done it in the past, from when we went from vinyl to CD. Mm -hmm. But it does make sense. Now we've got the original masters to make a really classy job of, the, of this particular um, edition. And uh, so that's what we've decided to do, and hopefully it will it will attract new people. That's, that's always been the goal. And, uh, and we're all still alive, so why not? <laughs> Are you surprised this many years on at the interest there still is in the band? Oh yes, I am. I'm, 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 I'm always delighted. Um, I must admit, uh, it takes me by surprise. We do go to events once a year, which are run by a, a maniacal group of lovely people um, <laughs> who get together every year from all around the world in the name of the band, and um, and they've become such good friends in themselves, and uh, and and they seem to attract new people all the time as well. Um, and at this kind of convention thing, I'm always meeting people who have discovered the band recently for the first time, and, and, and they love to find other people who like it as well. So it's like a, a, a universal club, really. Um, but uh, it's, it, they are, they, they seem to attract people, the music attracts people of a certain type, or, or not, not, all, not all the same type, but they all have something in common, because they all get on so well. It's a very inclusive group of people, so we do that once a year. And every time I go, I'm, I am very surprised. I'm, I'm quite amazed at the, at the dedication of people um, to the music because they really have found something that they find special about it. And, um, and of course, we we were just doing what came reasonably naturally to us at the time. <laughs> and uh, it's lovely to find that it's you know it does find a niche in some people's. Um, Hearts, you know, so it, is, it is quite amazing, I must admit. And to find that a lot of them are young, too, uh, you know, youngsters who I, I think they probably are attracted to the analog nature of the recordings and mm -hmm. the way we played. There was no no digital way of fixing things. If it was a mistake was made, it had to stay on or you had to retake it, you know. Mm -hmm. So there, there's an attraction, I think, to the instruments and the way we recorded as well, which uh, is you know, it's quite quirky to the modern listener. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the albums themselves now. In a Glass House, um, my understanding of it, that album initially was not released in America because the label felt it was too uncommercial. Is that correct? It certainly didn't get released. You're right. I'm afraid I'm not great on the history of things. I can't remember the reason for it. Um, I guess that probably was the reason. Um, I think all the others came out, did they? I yes, they did. that's right. Mm -hmm. That um, was the sole one that didn't. Yeah. That's right. The next one, Freehand, I think, made it all right, and uh, and so on. So, uh, yes, it might be that in the glass house. Um, it was uh, re-released. It was released by when we were with um, a management company called Worldwide Artists, which was 
um, you know, a period of time which, which when we first came over, really, we were under their management. That's why we managed to get uh, a tour with Black Sabbath, which was very interesting because they were with the same management company, but with a bit of a mismatch musically, as you can imagine. But, uh, <laughs> it, did, it did actually launch us quite well. We managed to get some big gigs, at least, playing to uh, large crowds on our first visit, which was... It's a wrong crowd, but it was still it was a crowd. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I don't know why In a Glass House didn't make it, but it, it's a very brittle sounding album, I think. Mm -hmm. um, when you listen to it, it was a time when we were all quite nervy ourselves. Um, we just uh, parted company with one of the founder members of the band, Phil, who was the eldest member, and he decided not to be part of it anymore. So we went from six to five, um, and we wrote this uh, this glass house sort of brittle glassy sounding sort of album which was but, but a lot of people love it and it's very um it is very contrapuntal as usual and um and, and quite active harmonically so uh, yeah i think it, it i'm glad you know it's going to get a chance to be heard properly Absolutely. Now, in talking about some of the bands you played with, Black Sabbath, of course, being one, another band that you played with quite a bit was Jethro Tull. What are some of your recollections of that period? Well, that, that was the happiest period, really, for us. Um, up to then, we had to take more or less what was, what was coming. Um, we would have to tour with whoever would have us. Um, and again, there were lots of mismatches and... Um, Black Oak, Arkansas, and um, <laughs> uh, Aerosmith, I seem to remember, and a few, a few, a few other really hard rock albums, uh, people, sorry, artists. Um, so when we were, we were just about to come home from our first tour, we'd done a two-month tour of the States, and um, all our loved ones were looking forward to us coming home, and we, we were offered the first um, support with Jethro that we would experience. So we had to take it. So we stayed out for another another month to support them. And, and of course, musically, there was, it's a wonderful match. Uh, the people who came to Interjetro <laughs> were, you know, very favourable towards us, and, and we really liked them as people in the band. They were the the closest thing we got to having friends in the you know in the uh, in the business. I think really, um, it was very it was a very pleasant time. <clears throat> we had a lot of fun with them and. Uh, so that, and then we went on to do a similar tour in Europe, mm -hmm. and that's what broke us, really. Um, and we went back in our own strength in some places because of the uh, support we found from, from, from that crowd. So that was a very worthwhile um, time for us. And, and so we did love them. We, we thought they were great fun. Just bad. Right, yeah, those are good guys. Now, what about um, the Power and the Glory record? Um I wanted to ask you about that. That's uh, I've always found that an interesting record. It's the first uh, General Giant record I ever bought. Uh, what are some of your recollections okay. of that period? Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not great at recalling, but I'll have a go. Um, <laughs> it's, quite an, it's, it's quite a it's the nearest thing to a concept album we've had, really, that was successful as a concept album. Um, it wasn't intended to be originally, but it, it developed as um, the corruption of power and the, the cycle of corruption and disappointment and all the rest of it. Um, and uh, it, but, but I, I think it began in the usual way, which was just Ray and myself uh, would just come up with some musical ideas and um, uh, and offer them to each other and then extend them with each other's help and uh, so on. So there was a lot of co-writing going on. And I think it was when when Derek got involved with the lyrics that we began to realize the thing was going to take a theme. And, uh, and it, it developed very naturally, I think. And um, one or two of the songs, I think, are some of the strongest we did, in a way, um, uh, because they had such a strong sort of context, really. Uh, particularly um, from, in my own case, I like the way I wrote Aspirations, which was one of, one of my better songs, I think, as a song. Because a lot of things I wrote were more like pieces rather than songs, you know? Mm -hmm. right. but, uh, I think Aspirations, within the con you can take it out of the context of the album and it still stands as a, as a song of affection and hope and, uh, and 
so on. So it, it, yeah, it, was a, it was a good time for us, I think. We were still inventive and creative. We were still, because we got John after Octopus, we were still quite rocky but, uh, and funky. But it was, uh, I think it was a, an imaginative album and quite, quite alive, really. Right, right. What do you think? Uh, I love that record. I, I I thought it was a great record. And and one thing I think is really interesting about Gentle Giant, it, of course, the band gets gets put in the same bag with uh, progressive rock or whatever. But I I always felt Gentle Giant was a little bit more song oriented than a band like say uh, Yes, you know, which has these huge yeah. album sides of you know big meandering. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I I think I I agree with you. I mean, we didn't have, we weren't, um, if you like, we weren't players that enjoyed particular extensive exposure. Mm-hmm. We were, I think we were we were quite adept at playing, but uh, none of us had a particular flair for playing for any great length of time. Um, so we would rather solo over a particularly interesting backing which made the solos band, whether it was good or bad, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> the backing had an interest to it. So um, I think the playing that we did, we just enjoyed playing with sort of strapuntally amongst ourselves mm-hmm. rather than um, <clears throat> rather than just playing a backing while somebody just does uh, his own thing over the top. Um, although we left room for that in the live situation so mm-hmm. that uh, it could take place. Um, I think uh, it was never something we, we particularly... I don't think we actually enjoyed listening to other people do it either, so probably we were just being selfish. It's not something we enjoyed very much. Right. Uh, yeah. So we, we'd rather keep, keep fairly focused and uh, make a, feel, have a, feel a point, make a point of everything. That's, that's one of the things that really differentiates General Giant is that uh, I guess there's there's more of a rhythmic, rhythmic aspect, I think, to a lot of the music, and... Um, it's not quite as meandering and, and broad. It it's maybe has a little bit more of a an actual point to it, and in, in some you know, yeah. a little bit more of a compositional integrity, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> we always went for that anyway. We always because that's what we really enjoyed. Um, and um, in terms of sort of ambient, sort of um, <clears throat> atmospheric stuff, I don't think as a band we we, we our characters were weren't that way inclined, so we would never have been able to write like that for each other, I don't think, really. Right. Um, right. So, uh, so that, you, you know what I mean? So I think that was another element that was definitely not part of what we did, where things just float for, for several minutes. It's, uh, there's always something happening to make it, uh, to engage the players. So that's just the way we were as a group, I think. 